Hello and welcome to this trove video on the Southern Utanika Basin located in the Republic of South Africa. We're going to review what we know about the Total Energies discoveries, the Brulpada and Luperd wells. The Utanika Basin is located off the south coast of South Africa between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. This slide provides some context for those discoveries. They are in fact two major gas condensate discoveries that lie within the Padovisi Fairway, located here. Reports are that this is a multi-TCF resource with over 10 TCF of gas condensate. It's located in the deep water part of the basin, uh, over 500 metres water depth. Note that most of the discoveries to date have been in the adjacent Bredasdort Basin to the northwest. And within that basin, there are three gas fields, the EM, the FA and the FO gas field, which supply gas as a feedstock to the important Mossel Bay plant, a gas to liquids plant that provides um, liquid petroleum products for the domestic market. And the total energy uh, discoveries are set against the backdrop of energy supply challenges in South Africa. More of that later. It's worth pointing out that the potential of the Southern Utanika Basin was originally recognised and mapped by the Ranger Royal team, uh, later CNR, uh, together with Jacques Roux, who was seconded from PASA um, and worked with the team in Guildford. And this was all done before the technology to actually drill in these uh, challenging met ocean conditions was uh, developed. This slide provides a tectonic setting. The Southern Utanika Basin is one of uh, several sub-basins of the Utanika Basin uh, and the Padovisi discoveries are uh, located down here in the southwest of the Southern Utanika Basin. The Southern Utanika Basin is separated from the northern sub-basins, the Bredarsdor, Pletmos, Kamtus, Algoa, by this west-southwest trending lineament, which is probably an extinct strike-slip fault. The southern side of the southern Utanika Basin is defined by this feature, the Diaz Marginal Ridge. It's a basement high. The northern basins actually comprise a series of uh, Mesozoic oblique extension half grabens that use a pre-existing or inherited Paleozoic structural grain of the Cape Fold Belt, which is very evident on shore. However, these, uh, this, these, these trends are not that obvious in the southern Utanika Basin and it's quite probable that the tectonics in, in this basin are more dominated by strike slip faults which were active at the same time during the Mesozoic separation of Africa and South America. This is a stratigraphic column for the Bredasdort Basin. It is also applicable to the uh, deep water basins we believe uh, and shows that the Padovisi fairway is uh, indeed a post rift play uh, of a lower Cretaceous stage. Uh, the Padovisi Reservoir comprises a basin floor turbidite fan complex of Albion age. These other symbols here show the occurrence of fields within the Bredarsdort Basin and you can see that the Padovisi play fairway is equivalent to the youngest of these fields. In terms of source rock, there are a number of source horizons in the Lower Cretaceous section and uh, the belief is that these would be um, oil and gas mature enough to provide a, a charge for the Padovisi fairway. This is a total energies slide illustrating uh, the depositional model for the Padovisi fairway. Um, it is shown here as a basin floor fan complex, uh, an axial complex, which was fed by turbidites coming out of the Bredarsdorp basin to the uh, west or off the Agulis arch to the southwest and moving uh, to the northeast along the uh, basin axis. It's also possible that some turbidites, some sediment were was fed off the uh, Diaz Marginal Ridge on the southeast side of the Uznika Basin. Um, and you have to remember at this time that um, quite possibly the Falklands Plateau and other South American microcontinent fragments were sitting uh, across this Agulhas Falklands fracture zone to the southeast and could have been providing sediment from that direction. Okay, on to the Brule Paddle discovery itself. This geoseismic section nicely illustrates the trap and the play. It's from north to south through the well. The primary reservoir is shown here. It is uh, an Albion aged uh, turbidite sandstone and there is also a deeper secondary target that was encountered in the well. 
the traps are essentially stratigraphic and pinch out southwards onto the Diaz Ridge. We understand that these traps are full to spill and that the uh, source rock for these uh, accumulations are the underlying lower Cretaceous marine shales, uh, similar to those which charge the Bredars Dort Basin fields. This slide illustrates the CPI for the Brule Padda discovery, both at the primary reservoir and the secondary reservoir level. At the primary reservoir level, the well encountered 34 metres of net gas condensate pay, together with an oil rim and uh, a water leg. The reservoir is described as high net growth and good quality. The well encountered 23 metres of net gas condensate pay in the secondary uh, reservoir, uh, again described as uh, good quality. However, no oil water contact was encountered and so there is less certainty on column height. This is a north to south seismic line through Brule Padda and illustrates the seismic nature of the trap. The reservoir is located in here and you can clearly see how it thins and pinches out southwards onto the Diaz Ridge underlying it. You can also see clearly that there is an amplitude shut off at this level here which probably corresponds to the oil water contact. There is reported conformance of amplitude to the structure and there is an AVO response which is consistent with the presence of trapped hydrocarbons. Flat spots uh, are noted from Brule Padda and Luperd and this uh, de-risks the other Padavisi play fairway prospects. This north to south geoseismic through Luperd well illustrates its similarity to Brule Padda. The reservoir is sitting at this level here and you can see that it's another stratigraphic trap pinching out to the south onto the underlying Diaz Ridge. In this well, 73 metres of net gas condensate pay was encountered. From the geoseismic it looks like it didn't encounter a water leg but this well was tested at 33 million cubic feet of gas a day and 4,300 odd barrels of condensate. We understand that this was a constrained rate, probably constrained by surface uh, equipment, which means it would have flowed possibly significantly better. Total Energies describe the connectivity of this reservoir as uh, better than expected. So that's uh, positive news. And again, the success here helps to de-risk the other Padovici prospects. Okay, what next for block 11B, 12B? Well, as has been noted, there are several large undrilled prospects on the Padovici fairway, which have been de-risked by the success at Brule Padda and Luperd, and together could represent a very large uh, amount of uh, hydrocarbons. This might offer a route for South Africa to lessen its dependence on oil and gas imports, and also on coal for electricity generation. For comparison, We've included uh, an image of the Johann Svedrup field in the North Sea, a very large field, just to show how it compares in aerial size to the prospects and discoveries on the Padovici fairway. This is an interesting slide. We like this one. It's a composite seismic section through all of the Padovici discoveries and prospects at this level here, uh, with Platana in the west going eastwards through Woodboom, through Luperd south and into Blasop. It's a good slide because it shows how the remaining prospects are have a similar character to the two discoveries at Brulpada and uh, Luperd. And as such, offers um, uh, these prospects offer a huge upside to the existing discoveries. Uh, do note that there is a shallower seismic anomaly up here which Brulpada would have encountered. It looks like it has a hard top compared to the Padovici soft top responses and so we think this is probably some sort of igneous sill which are known to occur in the area. This slide illustrates some of the infrastructure and energy supply issues of South Africa. It comes from the PASA brochure dated 2017 so it's a little out of date. ESCOM provides all the domestic electricity for South Africa but is sourced 90% from coal. Now, South Africa does have proven coal reserves of uh, 30 billion tonnes, at least that was in 2017. And the domestic oil consumption is 575,000 barrels of oil a day at that time. However, the Mossel Bay gas liquids plant only produces about 6% of that. So aside from some coal to liquids generation, South Africa imports 66% of its oil, at least it did in 2017. Now, the Mossel Bay feedstock 
comes from the Bredasdorp fields, as previously mentioned, but they are in serious decline, so would be looking for other sources of gas. Gas is imported from Mozambique, but that's a long way from the Western Cape, uh, which is a, a major sort of population centre. Of course, there is a Kudu gas field, a stranded gas field on the Atlantic margin, which has struggled to uh, be able to provide gas or electricity to the Western Cape. But who knows, with the new discoveries in the Orange Basin, at Graf 1 and Venus 1, together with these uh, major uh, discoveries in the southern Utanika Basin, the whole energy scene in the uh, Western Cape could be transformed. Just a quick comment about the information presented. It's all come from the Trove database. This is just one page to illustrate some of the information that is held there. Much, much more is available to those who subscribe to Trove. So with oil and gas supply issues in mind, what is the likely development scenario for the Brulpada and Luperd discoveries? Well, as has previously been mentioned, the Mossel Bay gas to liquids plant is running short of gas. So an obvious solution for that would be to produce these deep water discoveries, the gas condensate there, uh, back through the FA platform to supply Mossel Bay. However, there is almost certainly much more gas condensate uh, in the deep water discoveries than Mossel Bay can currently handle. And that raises some interesting possibilities about what to do with the, uh, the excess. Clearly, one option would be to uh, expand the Mossel Bay plant so that it can handle much more liquid. It may also be that the power station here can take some. Maybe there'll be other power stations that could be built to, to take um, the excess. Um, it's uh, interesting to speculate. So what are the other players in the area? Just to key you in, this is the outline of block 11B12B held by Total Energies and the Padovisi discoveries are in the southwest corner down here. The blocks to the north and the west are held by Petro SA and include the Bredarsdorp Basin existing producing fields. To the south, this large area of acreage is also held by Total Energies. It's deeper water than 11B12B. It might extend onto oceanic crust, and so it'll be interesting to see what they're chasing out there. What's of particular interest right now is this block here held by New Age. Uh, it covers the uh, Gamtus and Algoa basins, but also extends onto the southern Utanika basin. This little inset shows that in a bit more detail. There's the Gamtus Basin, the Algoa Basin, the Southern Utanika Basin. And what is interesting is that they have a prospect mapped within the Southern Utanika Basin, just outboard of the Gamtus Basin. The little uh, inset down here shows uh, their definitional model that um, sands, are, are presumably turbidites, are exiting from both the Gamtus and the Algoa Basin and are being deposited as deep water fans in the Southern Utanika Basin, a long strike from Padavisi. And, uh, and so it looks like they're chasing the same play. And my guess is that this prospect here is uh, basically a Brulpada, Luperd lookalike. And so it'd be very interesting to see how that um, progresses now that uh, there has been success uh, at Luperd and Brulpada. This is a slide hot off the press from Envoy. It lists the volumetrics for the leads and prospects that New Age have mapped on their license. The Utanika prospect for which Luperd and Brulpada are analogues, they estimate somewhere in the region of 1.7 billion barrels of oil in place. They have also modelled the seismic response across this prospect. Their modelling suggests there is a class 1 stroke 2 AVO anomaly. So in summary, Brulpada and Luperd are two major post-rift gas condensate discoveries that are located within the uh, Padovisi Fairway, which is an Albion Age deep marine uh, fan complex. They open up the deep water basin uh, prospectivity. Um, there are other prospects which have been de-risked by these discoveries, including the other Padovisi prospects uh, and also the prospects in the New Age uh, acreage. We're looking at a probable multi-TCF resource here uh, with multiple development scenarios possible. They are timely discoveries for South Africa in terms of its energy challenges and its oil and gas supply challenges. The next African videos will be an update in and news in uh, South Africa, Namibia and East Africa, and also on the Ravuma Basin, where there are supergiant gas discoveries in the order of 100 TCF, all very interesting and exciting. 
This slide shows where we've put together recent Trove news videos. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get alerts for other upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and ring the bell and you'll be notified when we produce a new video. Finally, if you want to get in touch, there's the email and web address too. Thank you for watching.